Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. Look what's back on my bench. My friend's PlayStation. Oh, this thing's like a bad turd. You just can't flush it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding guys. Um, the previous video I did on this PlayStation where I stripped the laser down, cleaned it and put, reassembled it, I filmed that about a month ago. And my friend's had it since the, the PlayStation back since then. And he said it's fine. And now he's finally said, well, he's finally bit the bullet and said, can you chip it for me? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Um, this video is not going to be a chip in the PlayStation video, guys. I've already done one of those. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to show you how I calibrate a laser so it reads um, CDRs better. Um, and this is a, like a, a, an inspired video by Gadget UK. Um, in a couple of his videos recently, he calibrated a laser for a PlayStation and um, a um, Saturn, I think it was. Or was it a Nintendo GameCube? Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing, guys, but I do it slightly differently. Um, what I tend to do is I use an audio CD um, and I calibrate the laser on the very outer edge of the CD because that's where um, the laser is going to be working its hardest to read the CD so uh, guys and I'm going to be using my scope guys so um, yeah give me five minutes to set up and um, we'll get going okay guys back again um, the way I'm going to do this is is this I'm going to be using a genuine factory press CD and this CD very last track goes right on the very edge of the CD uh, and that's what I want guys because and the reason for that is because that's where the laser is going to be working its hardest to read the disc and I'll explain that in a little while and also guys I have an identical copy I've made with a pretty crap CDR guys and I'll explain the reason why I'm using a crap CDR later on um, but that's that's all I'm doing guys, they're both identical, I just put this in my burner, read the image and then burnt the uh, CDR uh, and that's what I'm going to be using guys. Okay guys, back again. Um, I just want to explain why I read the outer edge of the CD when I'm calibrating a, a, a laser. The, uh, like I said, the, the outer edge of the CD is the most difficult part for a CD laser to pick up. And the reason for that is because you've got, you know, when you pick a CD up, you're normally touching it with your fingers. Um, also, what you'll notice is you'll get, if you ever look at a CD side on, you'll get wobble like this. It will wobble like this if you watch it closely. So, and that, and that wobble. If the laser's here, it's not going to be very pronounced. But the further you get out, the more exaggerated that wobble becomes and more difficult for the laser to pick up. So that's just a couple of the reasons why I always calibrate the laser on the outer edge. Because if you can get it to read the outer edge, guys, and it reads it fine, the rest of the disc is not going to be a problem. Hey, guys, back again. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like when it's reading the final track. That's what I mean when you need to get a disc, you know, where it's reading the very edge. See if I can zoom in on that. Whoops, too far. It's very, very close to the edge, guys, and that's the more difficult part for the, the actual laser or optical, uh, optical pickup to read. Now you can actually see the wobble of the disc. Remember I was talking about the wobble of the disc, guys? Can you see the, the disc wobbling and the, the, the focus lens going up and down in unison with a, with a disc? So, um, yeah, that's the final track, guys. That's the one I'm going to be doing uh, all my measurements on. Hey, guys, back again. Um, I just want to explain what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to up my scope up to the 
RF test point on the PlayStation motherboard and I'll show you that guys, I'll show you that picture now. Um, and what that will do is it will display an eye pattern on my scope and it will look something like this, very similar to this. Guys, now there's a lot of information you can get from an eye pattern. Um, but the, the one part of the, the information I'm looking for is something called peak to peak voltage. So I want to see what the peak to peak voltage is of a genuine CD. Now the way you would do this on a scope guys is you would have vertical squares going like this up on your scope. And you you know you, if you were set for something like 200 millivolts every vertical square you would see would be 200 millivolts so this would be one two three four five divisions so five times 200 which is a thousand millivolts which is basically one volt guys so it, let's say I do that guys and it, it comes back as 1.1 volts guys so now I know I have a reference what the genuine factory press CD is now as you can see guys, what you'll notice when I do the same for the CDR, you'll see that the eye pattern is actually smaller than the genuine factory press CD. So this one, the CDR, could be somewhere like 1 volt. Guys, and what's the difference between the two? Well, it's not 0.1 volt. Or 100 millivolts. So all I have to do then, guys, is get this to match this by adding 100 millivolts by adjusting the adjustment pot on the side of the laser, guys. And I'll show you that picture now. The the adjustment. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do guys, I'm just going to adjust this so it matches this. And it's as simple as that. Okay guys, uh, let me measure the genuine pressed CD. So uh, first things first, I'm going to power this thing on. And I'm going to let it spin up and recognize, make, uh, make sure the PlayStation recognizes it's an audio CD. Because normally it will stop. There you go. So what I'm going to do now is press the X button on the controller. And I'm just going to press the right shoulder button. And what that does, go to the very end of the final track. So what I can do now is, if you look at my scope guys, you'll see the eye pattern for the final track. What I want you to look at is the very bottom left corner of the scope. You'll see something say one, it's, it's in yellow, one equals 200 millivolts. Basically what that's saying is, is that's the input, my probe input. I'm on channel one. It's a four channel scope, I'm on channel one. And what that's saying is, is 200 millivolts. So each vertical square you see is 200 millivolts now if you look at the eye pattern what I can see I don't know if you can see it because of the glare I can see one two three four four and a half squares so four and a half times 200 is 900 millivolts guys and that's what my eye pattern is on the genuine factory pressed CD 900 millivolts so what I'm going to do guys, is I'm just going to screen dump that because I can do that with this scope, I can take uh, like screen captures with it. Uh, and what I'll do then, is once I've calibrated the laser, I'll give you a before and after. So yeah, that's that part done guys, I know the voltage now for the um, original pressed CD. 
its very final track which is 900 millivolts there or thereabouts so what I'm going to do now guys is exactly the same but this time I'm going to do it for the CDR ok guys back again CDs on, uh, CDR's in there now same thing power it on let it spin up and then stop press X and get to the very final track and there you go guys that's that's the final track it won't go any further so let's come and have a look at this eye pattern um, I'm still on 200 millivolts per division you can see in the bottom left hand corner um, and but what I'm seeing guys I can see it straight away is this eye pattern is a lot smaller for the CDO let's count the divisions so one two three four that's dead nuts on four divisions so four times 200 800 millivolts guys that's what the CDO is 800 millivolts so I'll do the same again guys I'll take a screen capture of that So now we know the difference between a genuine pressed factory CD or, uh, CD and a um, CDR and what's the difference? 100 millivolts. So all I have to do guys is add 100 millivolts to the laser power so it matches the genuine CD and we should be golden and I'm going to do that now guys. Slightly creeping it up. You see it getting bigger. It's about 850. I'd say that's that's good to go there guys. I think that's it. So what I'm going to do is screen dump that so I can give you a before and after picture and that's it guys, that's it done. Yeah, I'd say that's about 900, it's, it's dipping a bit low, uh, maybe I can, I can get it a little bit better. I'd say that's that's the one right there. So I'll screen grab that one, guys, because that's I'd say that's the one. And and that's it. Laser's been adjusted for CDRs, guys. What I can do now is I'll chip this thing because I haven't chipped it yet. I thought you know I do this first before I chip it. And then um, we can go and test this out. So what you got to remember, guys, is this CD. These CDRs are pretty shit. Guys, if you use something like uh, Vibratum or Tayo Uden, I hope I'm saying that right, you normally never have a problem when it comes to burning CDRs for PlayStation, guys. So, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. That's, that's that adjusted. Hey, guys, back again. PlayStation's been chipped. Um, what I've done is I've burnt a copy of Metal Gear Solid. I'm going to... Do a little experiment, guys. I burnt it onto one of these crap discs. Um, I'll show you the discs I normally use for Brayton. These are actually Tayo Uden, um, but they're branded for Brayton. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm just going to do a bit of an experiment. Um, yeah, it's Metal Gear Solid, guys. Uh, don't shout at me because I own the original. <laughs> So, uh, 
Let's put this in the PlayStation and power on. Always a good sign when you see that, guys. And there we go, Metal Gear Solid. Absolutely fine. What I'll do now guys is I'll leave this running for like 45 minutes. Just to make sure, because what, not, what tends to happen if you've got a, a flaky laser, the longer you leave the PlayStation on, the worse the laser, laser gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it for 45 minutes. Just let it keep going over and over and over. Come back and then um, see if it's still working okay. But yeah, it looks good guys. I think I'll end the video here guys. If if I find anything wrong with it or anything like that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll come back. What I'll leave you with now guys is the before and after picture of that calibration that I took the street, uh, screen dumps from my um, scope and uh, yeah thanks for watching guys like subscribe all the usual stuff and I'll catch you on the next one